I'm going to show you how I watercolour my crepe paper flowers. Um, I really like this method because it makes the flowers look really real because the paint gets into all the little grooves and creates all those kind of colour variations that you get on real or garden roses. I'm not sure how clear this will show up. Let me just get that. You can see sort of in here all the different kind of colours and I love using it for my faded flowers because it just gets really kind of caught in all the edges. It's very very pretty. And then on this one you can see focus. Again just all the variations that the watercolour creates. And then this one's very, very soft. You can just see little flecks of colour that sort of catch. So it really is my favourite method of colouring the flowers. For this method, you will need a waterproof surface. I'm using just a, a plastic cat food mat. Um, I like to use waterproof surface because it means that the crepe paper gets really, really wet uh, and it doesn't, it, it, I don't know, it sort of like helps the paint get into all the nooks and crannies because it sort of sits there for a while. I find with kitchen roll it, it's too exorbitant and it sort of like just takes away a lot of the water before it can kind of stain the paper. I'm using a synthetic sable paintbrush, watercolour paintbrush, in size 10. Uh, some water, uh, watercolour paints of your kind of colour choice. I'm using a yellow ochre and a Picotti pink. The Picotti pink is my own colour. Um, I find that this is the most useful colour in kind of all of the painting of um, my flowers. It just seems to be a pink which is pretty much everywhere in sort of nature. Uh, you'll need your flower pieces or your petal pieces already cut out, some tweezers to lift, to help lift the um, paper pieces off of the surface. So my first three layers I pretty much try and make as dark as, it's all like fairly dark. Just because when you do look at flowers, they generally, or roses, they generally have quite a lot of shading to the centre of them. And I literally take it straight from the pan. To start with anyway, take it straight from the pan, just to get that nice depth of colour. And then for the first few layers I'm also going to mix in just a little bit of this pink. Just because I think it just adds a bit of variation to it. Don't worry if it looks quite dark, it does dry quite sort of like, it, won't. it goes quite pastel. And then I just put it onto some kitchen roll just to take any sort of like excess water, just so it doesn't stretch the pattern pieces out too much. Okay. 
I also don't mind that the pattern pieces sit in the paint which is left over. I think that sort of like adds to the overall effect. So I always start from the bottom of the petal and then drag the paint up so that you get the main bulk of the paint at the base of the petal. And it doesn't matter that some petals are darker than others because no flower is the same in nature. And again, just moving it to the kitchen wall. So for this rose I'm going for a real pastel yellow, just with that little hint of pink in the centre. Can just sort of just while it's so wet you can just drag your paintbrush along the top and it should just take up the paint into the grooves. For this demonstration I'm using a doublet crepe paper. It's probably my favourite, well, it's one of my favourites for rose to use for roses. Right, I get a new sheet. As I go through the layers, the lighter I'll get with the colour. So the outer leaves are quite pale, but just with a sort of like a hint of um, sort of flex. So because we're now starting on the sort of outer layers, we've done the core layers. I'm only going to pick up the pink from the waterproof ground. I think that would be enough. And don't worry too much about the fact that the pieces stretch. It's surprising how much the paper actually recovers.
So as I go onto the outer layers, I start to use the sort of ceramic plate more just to dilute the colour. And just maybe the odd spot of pink. So now because the water that I'm dipping into has got beautiful kind of like stain to it now, I'm just really adding the yellow colour at the bottom and just letting it naturally sort of like disperse around the petal. I might just put a few little drops of a darker colour just in some of these little areas. Just where the little nooks are. Just like you often see on real petals and just add a tiny bit, perhaps just mix that in actually to make that colour. Nice peachy colour. And again just add that in just on some of the edges. So you can see it's going to be really pastel. Very delicate colour. Because these are the very outer petals, 
So I'll probably add a little bit of pink at the bottom because you do often find little sort of like flashes of colour or a different sort of like colour on the outer petals especially on garden roses on all of them but just perhaps these two and then just on the base of these You have to be careful of them folding. Okay. So now I let those dry overnight. I like to make sure that they're fully dry. And I'll show you what they look like when when they're dry. This is what they look like after colouring. You can see they've just got, can you see that? Just really pretty little details. Very delicate, very delicate colouring. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on there. And then here's the finished result. You can see it's very subtle. And it's created like this peachy, peachy centre. Really, really, really pretty. And then the leaves I've covered as my pastel um, tutorial. <laughs> 